Okay, this is my replacement herd. These are only up, upper end of the farm, which is the lower bottom. There's the house. More of the slew, that's the slew down there. It gets water in it sometimes. And the upper screen is the road. There's a mineral feeder. That's so the cows can eat the green grass and not get sick. Span. That's a cattle rub. The cows go in there and they rub on it and they get chemicals on their back to keep the flies off of them in the summer. And that and that are hay rings. That keeps the uh, the cows from tromping down all the hay. And I'm spreading the hay around on the hill so that it'll fertilize the hill and I can get more coastal. That's the road coming up. Okay, there's our trash burner. The water pump. The back side of the house. There's our windmill that doesn't work yet. There's the back side that used to be a cistern, but it got blown off. Now there's a pan around the trucks. There's a pine tree. There's the big barn. It holds our tractors. That's an old hay barn. Soon to be a slot car track, an old junk barn, 80 years old more or less. And then, down. And then these are the cows on the hay ring. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to the barn. And I'm going to feed them some protein cubes. It's kind of a supplement. So as soon as I go to the barn, the cows will. This is, this is all my cubes. Got a big stack, and that's the minerals. And you can see the cows. And well, that's some interesting. That's some horns that have been killed up here. Give you some idea of the deer population. That's an old hay baler. Motorcycle. And this is my big tractor. A small tractor. See, here they come. So I'm going to call them. And I call them my going. Woo cow! Woo cow! And they should all start running up here in just a second. Here we go. Woo cow! And they all come up. These two cows are fighting for dominance there. Kind of quit. 24 is a nice cow. And I've got a little black calf that's around here. I'm going to spread out the, I mean, the cubes. These are my four wheelers. I've got a flat, another four wheeler tractor, and the mower in the back. So here we come with the cows, the replacement cows. These are the smaller ones. And look on this one. The green tag signifies it was done this year. And there should be an orange tag in his ear. It's a metal clip. So we get on the right side of everybody. I'll just walk down the middle of them. How you doing there? Some of them will let you pet them. Some won't kind of stirs them up. There's about 40 of them here. And a little black calf that we'll see in just a little bit is with the gray mother. Look, number 12 just took her head up. And she should let me touch her. Oh. This is my bull. The red brangus bull. Well, there's the... She's got a cute calf that's around here. I turned the red bringus bull out with the other bulls and they kind of beat up on him some. You can see his head. Where he's been button heads a whole bunch. Now I'll come back. Now, this is a very pretty black cat. And that is her mother. And there she goes. And all the other cows seem to be of interest in her. She's saying hi. And there are my cow dogs. 
I mean, Daisy's not much of a cow dog, but the other dogs are doing okay. They're not chasing now, so that's not too bad. Now, some of the younger ones, see there's a hay bale in the ring. That's to keep the hay from being stomped down. Now, the hay on the outside of it, that's going to be fertilizer. Try to get the rest of the field into coastal. Pretty much, he'll give you another pan of a, a herd. Okay. And that is a liquid mineral feed. It's a molasses mixture of chemicals to keep the cows heavy. And that's my diesel tank and the gas tank that's not used. Old dead tree. It's an old house, 40s or 50s came off the wolf place. It's behind the shed. Shed's coming down pretty soon. But the thing that makes that shed of value is that wood. It is what they call a Texas old pine. And it was made in the 20s or 30s. And what people do, they take it back and they refinish it and they make expensive uh, boxes and stuff, furniture. It's the back end of the house. That's kind of where my slot cars and toys are. And it's pretty rickety, but it's still up. Or a disc. I use that to break up the ground when it's pretty soft. Now that's my mower. <coughs> use it to cut the weeds and grasses down. That's a chisel plow. It breaks up big, heavy stuff. That's an old plow. That's my hay rake. I use it to rake the hay. That is an aerator. It slits and cuts little holes in the ground, let water get in. The remainder of this is some old stuff. Let's see if I can show you this. So, way in the back is extremely old, 1900s or so. And there's one more around here. Yes. They have a break right in there. Number seven international, so it's old. Now this over here is the corral where we work the cows. We bring them in, put them in the head gate, and do whatever kind of work they need, separate them and roll them up in the trailer. And that's a barn. And that's our new cattle guard, which makes life real easy getting in and out. You don't have to open the gates, so. That's pretty much it. Another cattle rub. You know, it's important to keep your, your animals without flies, and that's part of it. And here we go down the road. Let's see if we can do this. We'll see you guys coming up over here. Here's over the cattle guard. Okay. Now this over here is what we call the lane. It goes out to another field. Okay. Now crossing through this gate, we're on the McCarver. It's about 100 acres. Some more liquid minerals feed where we feed the cows. And there's a mineral feeder and another liquid feed. Okay. okay, but this is the bottom of the garden. The green stuff is oats. It should be a lot more green and lush, but we didn't have any rain in October and very little the rest of the month. And it has not grown. Normally the cows would be in there feeding on it, but it just hasn't grown enough. What I do, I make my oats on that pasture. And the coastal and the gray stuff, I guess it's gray or brown, it, it makes it. On the other side of the tank, we've got uh, storage. All on the other side of this, these two fields is, is what the farm is. So we should go with some. And in these trees here are some dove. And I bet you will see that's a lot of dove. Let's see if I can. That is a lot of dove for this time of year. They are very small birds, but they're very tasty. There we go. Okay. We'll go over here. I'll have to look at this stuff. That's the tank, and there's the, the other coastal field. Now, this is a 40 acre field coming up. We're panning. There's the dogs running out. This is the 40 acres to the edge 
And the other side of those trees over there is the deer patch. Which I'll probably put some stuff in later on that. And then there we go. That on the other side of the fence, it's over there is 30 acres of woods. There's some lakes in the back. Well, they're dry lakes, not really. Lakes. This is another group of cows. There's not very many of them. There's some hay rings. This is where I feed the outside cows. And what I've had to do was I was feeding too much out here. I had to move them and feed them out of the other feed lot, I guess. And this is our road going down the hill. We're still going towards the tank. What you saw. Now this is where I keep my hay. I'm going to use up about half of what I've got. So around. And this is the tank because we're in a dry period. We don't have any water. Normally there's a foot or two of water at least. Sometimes it's pretty full. So we're just waiting on the water. And what I've done can't show you, but I've done is trench that so that it'll get the water into the tank whenever we do have rain. Hey, on the hay, I don't know if you'll see it, but the hay, the bales themselves are wrapped up with string around them. And what I do when I get the tractor over here to move them, I cut the strings and I bring them over here and I tie them up to this post and as I dry them off it pulls out the strings. And if you don't do that with the strings, you have a lot of mess in your field, so it's good to get all your strings. Now this is the coastal field, and along the edge, the trees down there, that's the Leon River. We're going to drive through that, I give you a look. And that's about a 20-something acre field. Bottom end of the coastal field, and that's pecan trees. And we've had some pretty big ones get blown over. We had that big, bad 80-mile-hour windstorm. Didn't get that tree, but it got some other trees that size that have been cut up for firewood. So. This one was blown, part of it was blown off in the uh, windstorm. Pretty good size. A lot of it's been cut, so that's what it looks like now. You're driving along the river now. You can't really see the river till I get out. But we'll get out and look at a pretty place in the river. This is kind of how the trees grow along the river. Fortunately, we've got trees on this side, and the other side, neighbors, they don't have so many trees, so I'm trying to keep the trees over here to stop on the erosion. This is a, okay, this is about half of the outside herd. There's a little one running. Okay, that moaning over there, that's my, one of the three bulls we have out here. Up. Get all the little young ones around. See, they're all laying down. Redigesting their food. They, they spit up their food in their mouth and re chew it. So that's what they're sitting around chewing their cud. So, I want to watch them all come in this way. We'll have a little minor stampede. Woo cow! Woo cow! And there they come. That's my dogs. Let's see if I can get a decent angle on this. Okay. Should be able to watch me feed them. I know it's crooked, but didn't bring the tripod. And what you want to do is you want to put the feet out on the road, kind of, so they can find it. So what little I do put out, they get to have it all. So here we go, feeding the cows. Woo, cow!
like where that buzzer was. And there they go. A friendly cow. So I'll walk down the middle of them. See, that's in them chomping away. Yeah, yeah, you like that. Someone will let you pet them. Some won't. That's just all part of it. Some are bossier than others. See, that would have backed right over me. But fortunately, I. And that's a pretty cow. So she got horns. And there are all the cows. Watch it away. And that's 163. She's too smart. She jumps the cattle guard. She has good calves, so I keep her. Now let's look at some calves. Wailing, there's a pretty one right there. And what's that one gonna wail again? There we go. Yeah. And for her mother. A lot of times, the cow just has her calf, she'll keep them in the woods. Oh, and that's all on the edge, is the cedar trees. As long as they're the contain, they're okay. But most people don't like the cedar, because it's not a, a good thing. It takes a lot of water and doesn't, can't eat it. And more calves. Yeah. Pretty good sized heifer calf. Stretch it out. Well, there's one nursing. I like to see that. Some calves will nurse anything, and you can put two calves on a on cow. One cow. Okay. Get a good shot of some calves. She's off with her calf. And that's a very new calf. It's a tree that blew over into another pecan tree. I tried to pull it out with a tractor yesterday, but it was still too rooted. So that's like <coughs> close to half of the cow. This is part of the river. And especially when the tanks come out, the cows come down here and they get their water out of the river, which is nice. Get a pan down there, and that's more of the river. Uh, there's a cow. It's gonna come down here after I leave. We're after that cow. There's one bull. And here comes the other bull. Now he's chasing the female. Just why they were off over there. As you can see he's a pretty good sized bull. This is this one too. So Maybe another time I'll catch the old bull busy. But we'll make this a G feature. Okay, this is a very fresh calf. Umbilical cord is still on it, slightly. It was born last night or this morning. Kind of shy. Kind of hiding in the bushes, which keeps it safe from others. Wherever we get to. Down in this bunch of rocks under you find a lot of artifacts. Uh, skin scrapers, arrowheads, and kind of like that. And this is another panning view in the river. And there's a dog in the, going down there getting some water. I'll throw them 
to stick out. Yeah. Okay, this is a big old tree. See that? I'll get a side though. It's a big tree. Real old. This is another pecan grove. This was planted in the 1930s or 40s. And this is another feeding area. It's about 15 acres. Way over there, the green field is what we call the Whitney Bottom. It's got a river on it too. It's kind of nice. Okay, this is the Whitney Bottom. Just a little close view of it. Then again, along the trees is the river. It's got a nice bend right in there. That's a good spot. Good dove hunting there. Beating in the hay You can see that one cow kind of chomping down. Some of the other cows have come back over here. There's supposed to be 80 mother cows on the outside, and there should be 30 something of the younger calves. And they're all down here having a good time. It's a nice warm day, so things are going pretty good on the farm. And I guess I won't feed them anymore because I can't find the other group of them. But there's another group of cows someplace. It's important because that's my hay. Another bundle of hay that I got. So I got 225 bales of hay left. And that's about what I need. I hope. I hope it's going to be enough. There's Daisy. Okay. Believe it or not, this is a deer patch. And we didn't have the oats get up as much as they should have this year, so it didn't produce near as much. But quite often, I'm going to put some more deer tape on the end of this. You can see a oh, hundred or so deer in this area. So. Pretty. Okay, this is Holly's room. We're inside. It's like kind of our fake fire. <clears throat> the reason we have the gas fire in there, it's a vent to let the CO2 out, but uh, don't really think that fireplace will hold up very much longer. There are some pictures, and those two pictures up, the big pictures, were just friends of the family. They, the family didn't want their pictures, so we took them, so we claim them. And there's the air conditioner, lap of luxury in the summer. And Kelly figured out how to work that thing really effective, efficiently. She left it on all the time and had a real low electric bill. I was surprised. And there's some of Holly's dolls, some of her stuff. Kelly decorates her room all the time. And there's a pheasant shot someplace besides here. And here's an old 1900-ish quilted rug with the piece missing, so it wasn't perfect. There's a South Texas deer. It was pretty good deer. And there's some doll things Kelly has put up over there. And there we go with that. There's some pictures. And you know, I'm missing stuff, but it's about the best I can do. There's the, the old goat of the house. Uh, and let's get back down here. And there's our her Elmo doll, they're gone right now, but she likes the Elmo because it reads, talks to her. So we'll go show you the other. And this is our large area. It's just kind of hard to keep everything going. And there's our stuff there. And there's Kelly's flowers and there's, there's our fireplace. It works pretty good. So it's pretty much what we're going to have. What I'm going to do to fill in the rest of the farm stuff is I'm going to put in some deer pictures so wish y'all a happy Christmas and Merry New Year's and I guess I'll talk to you later.